So firstly, congratulations on uh, the contract extension. How do you feel? Yeah, delighted. I mean, I've spoke all a long time back. The chairman spoke to me and I think with the, you know, how hectic the season is and, you know, games thick and fast, um, you know, we, we had other things to concentrate on and, you know, we, we spoke again a couple of weeks ago and, yeah, look, it, it, it's a place that's, that means a lot to me. Um, and so I was glad to, you know, commit my uh, my, my life away to, to the club again. So now, yeah, buzzing, really excited. You've always been quite realistic with your aims that you set out and that you express to the public. Yeah. Uh, do you feel the ambitions of yourself and the board align? Yeah, I do. Look, I mean, under no illusions, um, you know, where we're at. You know, uh, Reds United as a football club, um, and you know the chairman. Wayne and Zita, the directors, we, you know, we, we speak a lot, you know, and we're always in contact and I, I think our feelings and our ambitions are, are very, very well matched and, um, you know, long may that continue. So take us back to when you originally became manager, <laughs> September 2020. Yeah. Uh, what were the initial aims set out then and how has the club changed as a well, whole? <laughs> well, to be honest, I, I think the, the chairman probably had a list of <laughs> of managers that he, he would have liked to have appointed um, and I don't think many people would have taken the job uh, I think it was you know and we as a club this group you know and the supporters we, we, we'd laugh and we joke about uh, the San Marino of non-league but it was when it I mean you know I think 27 games on the bounce they'd lost and the won one I think they'd beaten and eaten which is always nice to be them um, but you know, it was a difficult, it was a very, very difficult job. Uh, again, the, Dave had come in, there'd been a change at the top. Uh, I'd known Dave a long, long time. It was, it was certainly a challenge for me, but it was one that, after speaking to Dave, the, the initial aim was to change the mindset of people because naturally they'd been a, a bit of a laughing stock for a while um, and there was no guarantees. It, we were a very, um, unsexy club. It was it was difficult to recruit. Um, the budget was, you know, it's Redditch and the budget was never going to be anything to go out and get big hitters in. Uh, so it was always again, it's always going to be difficult. But we, we we set down the plan of just first of all stabilise the club. They would have been relegated if it hadn't been for the COVID um, break. And it was about just trying to put Redditch back on the map. We couldn't be unrealistic. We knew that we're not going to go out and challenge and, and whatnot. And I think but when the, the season was curtailed after 10 games, we, I think we finished, we were sixth in the table, you know, so which was, you know, a, a, a positive. I know it was early doors and I think we only played nine games in the league, but there was, there was we'd created a little bit of positivity. Uh, and I think people could see that we were moving in the right direction, but it was, it was very, very early doors. And then, you know, the, the following season comes comes around quickly. Um, and and look, it was a struggle. It was a real, real struggle. I think the the realism at home, that again, you know, the quality of player that we had at the club wasn't quite good enough. There's still a bit of a grey cloud over the, the, the place and people were talking about, you know, is the previous owner still in charge? and you know, the player's going to get paid. And, and I, I, what I will say is that in the time that I've been here, you know, with, with, with Dave, uh, the, David Faulkner, that the players have always been paid. And that's a big, that's a big, big thing. And I, I said to Dave when I came in, look, if this is going to work, if I'm going to put my name to this, you know, I think, and, and again, in football, I, I'm, I can be a little bit more mighty, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm honest with that. Uh, some people like me, some don't, and that's that's fine. But what I do is I don't tell him lies to anybody. I'm always honest, and I said that if I'm going to come in, if I'm going to come on board, then I can only work for a, a people that are as honest as me. So if you want me to be your manager and you want it to work, then you've got to be honest with me. And to be fair, since day one he has been, and the players have, have had that money. That's a big thing because you, you know I know there's long history of that probably not happening before. Uh, you know, some people may not like talking about that, but again, I, I'm comfortable with it. So we, we we nailed that, and I think again it was, you know, it was building blocks. But we we weren't great, and you know, everybody knows now we got to obviously the January uh, 2022, 
and uh, we played New Year's Day or January 2nd at Stourbridge. Um, got battered 4-0. Uh, I sat down with Dave and I was honest and said, look, the reality is with the team that we've got, we can't really move forward because we will. We are a relegation team. You know the budget is a bottom three relegation budget, and we, we need we need a bit more help. And you know when I told him on the back of that because we weren't scoring any goals, when I told him that the first player I wanted to sign was a defender, he, he weren't having. He, he you know he looked at me obviously questioned me, but you know we, we signed Kevin Flanagan and. You know, I know we've, we've spoke about it a lot, but it changed everything because it, what Callum did is he brought us in that experience and a bit of quality, a bit of know-how and understanding, and that was the catalyst really for us to move forward. And we went nine games and beat it, and and then what that did, it made people have a l little bit of a look at us and, and take us seriously. And then you know we we all suffered with the, the Tom ranking, um, you know, losing Tom, and that hit everybody hard, me and the chairman as well, as well as the, the, the playing group and supporters. Um, and then we managed to get through, get over the line, and stayed up. Finished fifteenth, and we sat down in the summer, and we, you know we said we really want to, you know, push on. We want to push the club on, and we want to really, you know, become a genuine, you know, top ten team. And we, we want to move away from the uh, the uh, uh, we're we're seen to be a relegation, you know, team that's always in a relegation, uh, you, you know, candidates. And so in order for us to do that. We had to look at the, the the recruitment had to be much better, uh, and it you know touch wood you, you know it has been there's been some ups and downs this season, uh, most notably the you know the Russia game, um, uh, Stourbridge game at home, uh, Ilkeston uh, were real tough tough times, but I think overall so far it's been a real positive positive season, and hopefully we can you know we can we, we know again and we, you know we said earlier that we're realistic. In, in our aims and we're not a promotion chasing team at the moment but we, we're really starting to progress and build it and it's, it is small steps and we want to do small steps again till the end of the season and have a look at it again at, you know, come the end of the season and see if we can you know, push on again. You mentioned changing the mindset in them. Do you think, well you've obviously done a good job in that, um, our support has grown and so has our way of following. Yeah. How much of a difference does that make? It's massive. Again, look, if you, you've got to imagine, look, and even now, uh, and it, uh, we chuckle to ourselves as staff because when we came on board, we, you know, we inherited a, a football club that, you know, had a very, uh, you know, again, the, the San Marino mentality. We, we were losing mentality. 27 league games on the bounce, you know, at every round of the Cups, uh, and that's what the club was about. So the supporters, you know, we're coming to games with, with negative mindsets and what we said was if we can turn it around and, and we can um, you know build a platform and get better players in the building uh, and win games then people will come through the doors uh, and, and we won't be a laughing stock and I think that's what we've done so we've, we've managed to change the mindset by, by winning games and there's no better feeling I mean it, you, you know we look at this season that fans still can get frustrated um, and look you pay money you, you, you have your choice and I've got no problem with that I, I've spoken to many supporters you, you know on a, after a bad day it's like the interviews I'll always do an interview after a game and, uh, you know a lot of managers in our league and other leagues when they get beat they don't they, you know the you, you know the camera's not there at the ground <laughs> funny enough but I'll always make sure that when we lose I'll do an interview and you know when we win I'll probably share it around I'll do some and I'll give other staff members because I want them to because it's not it's not just about me it's about the staff I'm very fortunate that I've surrounded myself with really good knowledgeable people from data analysis guys to um, you know physios and, and two fantastic coaches and a, a great assistant manager so it ain't about it, it's never going to be just about Matt Clark it's about the team and I want everybody to take praise and and applaud it for when we do well and you know, we, and that's what we've been doing. So the, the mentality has definitely, definitely changed. And you know, we're talking about you know earlier on the season. You know, right up until probably December, we've been in the top four for most of the season, and that's telling you, you know, maybe we were we're, we're probably in a little bit of a false position, and it was always always going to be found out because we only had a small squad. But we, we've we've turned things around big time here, and you know, and there's more. There's still a lot more to come. As you finish that question, uh, there's more to come. What are some of your future plans at yeah, the club? Well, I think you know because of the the positions we've been in this season. You know, we get envious, and I, I do, and I, I go and see other clubs, and 
I'm, you know, or during the week I'm watching games, and I want to be, I want to be a team that seriously uh, contends for for playoff places. We're not good enough at the minute. We know, and but you can't go from you know being a team that's trying to keep away from the bottom of the league to to winning the league. We know that, uh, especially you know the the resources that we have at Redditch. But we believe now that we can be. Or we want to be seen as a as a genuine top ten, top ten team. That's the aim for this season: is to finish in the top ten. I believe we'll do that. Can we go and add a piece of silverware as well? We're obviously in one final, and we, you know, we, we're doing well in the in the Birmingham Senior Cup. But we want to be seen now when when other people are talking, other managers and other players uh, that you know. You know they're not bad, and you know they're a, a genuine top ten team. You, you look at around at established teams in that. You know, you, you know your Tamworths, your Russells. Russells are, are always in and around that, uh, and we want to be seen as that. Can we do that? I, I don't know, but I think to have that dream and and that drive to to achieve it, that's certainly what we you know we, we're striving to do as a, as a club. You know, from the top, you know, with Wayne Zeta and, and David. You know, to all my staff and the players, and you, you know, you look. I pinch myself. I, I said earlier in the week that I look now when we came in on board. You know, September 2020, it was look, it was a shambles. The club was a shambles. The playing staff was everything. Everything was poor. We've now, put, uh, you know, processes in place where, we, you know, we've got VO camera like most team. You know, first you know we do analysis on their position. You know, we've got. Oh, there's, a, there's a lot of method behind the madness. All of our training sessions, the, the data is analysed. The, the players are, you, you know, get to see all their, you know, their readings, how quick they've run, how far they've run. Uh, it's just light years from what it was, and you, you have to pinch yourself really. Um, and at the minute, things seem to be going in in the right direction. But at the same time, we we made sure that we, you know, we we don't sprint before we walk in, and we, we I think we get we get it right. But you always still want more. And, and I look at those teams in the top five and six, and oh, you're envious because we've done well against most of the teams, um, but we we're not quite there yet, and we know that. But like I say, to, to have a look at the dressing room, the, the players that I've got now. Um, you know, we, we just want to improve on that as well and, and keep adding, you know, quality if we can.